Welcome to Masters of Self University podcast, your highest source of sacred truths and universal wisdom. Hello, beautiful souls. I'm Rachel Fiore, mystic, spiritual teacher, psychic healer, and founder of Masters of Self University. Join our journey of soul transformation as we deep dive into this latest episode. Hello, mystical, beautiful, magical souls. This is Rachel Fiore with Masters of Self University, and I want to welcome you uh, for joining this episode of our podcast. Um, I am going to dive in uh, regarding a topic that has been weighing on me for quite a while, um, and one that is really critical for me, even as an individual, uh, moving forward on my own path in this world, my soul's path on this journey of this human experience. And that is mysticism versus spirituality. And I want to talk about what spirituality has become. Um, I was recently very strongly <laughs> guided um, to draw a very clear line in the sand between the two and to actually separate myself for the most part from um, what spirituality has become, what it's become. I'm being very clear on saying that. And what, what this means, I'm going to go over really what is mysticism, you know, my and what is spirituality? What is the difference? Because they are not one and the same, by the way, at all. They are not just words that we use in this spiritual woke culture bullshit that has created and poisoned what spirituality actually is. Um, so they are not one and the same. Um, and this is, you know, one of the challenges and um, unfortunate things about what spirituality has actually become because it's become a culture that lacks actual spiritual education, which I'm going to refer to now as mystical education. We still have ancient and updated mystical uh, wisdom to use and learn from and evolve from, allow, allow that wisdom to guide us. Um, but spirituality has really taken a turn for the worse in a very scary way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain why. When you understand what I'm talking about and why, um, it'll allow you to make a choice you know, what path are you truly choosing for yourself as an individual, as a soul, a divine soul having this human experience? What path do you want to go down? What one seems to be more important or appropriate for you and your soul? Um, and in order to choose what's best for you and to choose wisely, you have to be educated. And that is what is lacking in, in the spiritual community as a global spiritual community, is actual education. Everybody's fucking opinion is somehow a spiritual truth because it's my truth, which is absolute fucking bullshit. It's just ridiculous. So um, let's understand first, very simply, you know, what is the definition? What is the difference between mysticism versus spirituality? When you really start to understand the definition of spirituality, for example, you understand that it is very vague and it is vague for a reason. This isn't a criticism of what spirituality is. It is, has always been vague for a reason because spirituality is not religion. Religion is not spirituality. Okay. Just like mysticism is not religion and mysticism is not spirituality. You understand? And as a true mystic and as a mystical teacher, um, I, you know, I've been guided everything that I do as, as a, as a channel and as a mystical teacher, as a mystic, um, everything that I've created so far that my soul is here to create an offer to humanity. Um, and mystical teachings is why I'm here. And I did not understand the extreme importance of, um, separating and not blurring those two lines prior to recently, even though my guidance I have a certification where I coach, certify, train, educate coaches to become certified in the work that we offer at Masters of Self University, as many of you who listen to this know. It's a mystical life coach certification. And, you know, 
stuff like that. I don't choose to call it like labels because it's marketable or it sounds good or it sounds like, ooh, isn't this cool? I don't come from that place. I don't function that way. I don't think that way. Um, the words that the names, the labels, whatever, that are given in that sense and the importance of them um, are given to me. And so when I created the certification program to become a certified coach with the kind of work we offer at Masters of Self University, it was a mystical life coach certification. And it was very strongly, you know, given to me that that's what it is and that's what it's to be called. It isn't something that I would have just picked on my own. Um, I did not at the time understand the priceless, you know, value of representing mysticism. Even though I knew I was a mystic, I didn't call myself that. Um, and the reason why I didn't, and this is perfect to show you where your egoic mind gets in the way and fucks everything up, always ruins something and takes you off track, even if it's just a tiny little bit. Um, but my mind got in the way, my egoic mind got in the way, you know, years ago and was just like, but hardly anybody really knows what that is. And it's not relatable. Well, stupid me. I, you know, 99% of the time, I don't even question. I just follow my own guidance. I will say it was very heavily, um, it was very strong suggestions to use certain terms versus others. And when it comes to marketing and things like that, fine. Like I let the experts tell me, I don't pretend to be an expert in that. I don't study that field. It's not what I'm here to do in this lifetime. Um, but the problem was I allowed, I ignored what my intuition, what my internal guidance said on what I need to stick with. That's the mistake I want to point out because we do that as humans, don't we? That's where we want to catch ourselves in real time in the moment. Okay. Um, and this is a, you know, this isn't some massive, huge mistake of I screwed up the world because I did this. I'm just sharing a real life example because I want you to see that in when it comes to like, quote unquote, little things, we are dismissing, I should have put my foot down with certain people in the past and just said, um, nope, this is the language and this is why. And if you can't get on board with it, that's okay. You don't work for me then. <laughs> you don't work with me or Masters of Self University because when divine guidance says do it this way, this is the way we do it. And I allowed that to kind of be blurred is my point. Got, got it? So um, I'm sharing that with you so you can understand when I'm so strongly nudged <laughs> to get back on track, to be more clean and precise with the language that I use and why um, at Masters of Self University. I'm, I'm, it, hopefully it'll be a little bit easier to understand the difference now between spirituality and mysticism. Um, and I can address this again at a future date. Um, you probably know by now that when I bring something up for the very first time on here, I give you a kind of a general teaching I tend to not go too, too deep into detail. And that is just so that you can sit with it, allow it to sink in, process it, digest it, all the things without making it so heavily on the, you know, mystical educational side um, that it's too much for you to take in. Okay. So having said that, I gave you a, a, a general, I started to give you a, an idea of what spirituality is, but I want you to understand something about spirituality versus mysticism. So spirituality is defined as uh, the practice of knowing, relating to, and connecting to um, a force that is greater than oneself. That's it. You know that there's a force greater than than oneself, whatever you want to call that force. And, and that's where people call, um, you know, they kind of interchange language, the universe, God, you know, source, there's something outside of you. There's a consciousness. Let me be very clear. This isn't wrong or bad. This is just, we're being educated. It's just understanding what a particular label is, what a particular course of, you know, pathway to follow. Spirituality has always been extremely vague. It is clear that it's not religion. It is not the same thing as religion. It is separate um, from religion. It's not the same thing. Um, it is allowing you to not have a rigid, strict, you know, dominating definition of, of 
what that consciousness or source or God or whatever um, outside of you is, but that you know it's there and that you believe to varying degrees that you are a soul, a divine being, having an incarnated human experience, that kind of thing. Generalities about that you're something more than just being human. You're something bigger and there's a force outside of you that is in existence. Okay. Um, spirituality is, it's just simply a path of exploration of that something that's bigger and beyond you. That's it. That's all that spirituality really means. You kind of make it what you want to make it. <laughs> and that's the the kind of freedom inside of spirituality. Um, it's a broad category, obviously, as I'm kind of emphasizing over and over here to understand. It's a connection that beyond the self, right, beyond the human self, um, it's a journey of seeking at one, you know, there's not an ultimate purpose, framework, or structure within spirituality. It isn't necessarily, and as soon as anybody's like, oh, yes, there is. No, that this, hello, this is the educational part. No, there isn't a specific framework, structure, or ultimate purpose with spirituality other than being spiritual. If people want to become more awakened, but that's spirituality, that's the freedom you have in spirituality to say that's what you want to do with it. Do you understand? That is not the definition of what it means to become a spiritual person. Do you understand? To be spiritual, people who are, and here's where spirituality has really taken a turn. We're going to start to understand this. That spirituality has become whatever the fuck people want it to be. And the, not to use, I kind of hate using terms that are considered religious, but, you know, we're talking about divinity here. The The holiness of, of spirituality um, has kind of been poisoned. We've been robbing the holiness of what spirituality in its vastness and, and flexibility and, you know, lack of structure of what it means to be spiritual. Somebody just can do plant medicine 17 times this month or in the last three months, you know, and I'm using a real life example. Oh my God, in the last three months, I did 17 ayahuasca. Blah. I'm so, oh, you're spiritual too. No, uh-uh. I'm not, no, <laughs> if that's what it means to be spiritual, no, I'm no longer calling myself spiritual. No, I'm not spiritual then. If that's what it means, your definition of spirituality is. Um, that's ignorance. That's irresponsibility. That is playing with something that you're calling a medicine when, you know, it's haphazard, it's reckless. Um, there is never a reason to do a plant ceremony journey that many fucking times in such a short period of time. You are not using plant medicine, what it's meant to be used for. And yet that's spirituality nowadays. You just do whatever the fuck you want and you call anything that you want spiritual and I'm spiritual. So I'm somehow awakening. No, you're not. You are not awakening just because you participate in plant medicine. <laughs> That's fucking stupidity. I'm just putting it out there what it is. That doesn't mean you are actually awakening. It means you've chosen to use a certain tool. And the truth is eight times out of 10, people don't know anywhere near what they need to know in the way of responsibility, in the way of integrity when it comes to doing something like plant medicine. Breath work is, you know, has been the, the big fucking, this is the new spiritual tool people use the last few years. And it's just trendy. It's trendy. People don't have the actual education and this tool. Yes, we do. I'm breath work certified. Blah, 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 blah. You don't know. You're not. <laughs> I've taken breath work courses. And let me tell you, if you want to use that spiritual tool, as a tool, don't ever misinterpret what I'm teaching and project onto me that I'm saying something. I'm not saying, listen to my actual words. Some of you aren't very good at that. 
It's not a judgment, but you're not. Some of you are not. Not the best at actually hearing teaching. You change what I say, make up in your own egoic mind. I must mean this and then rah, 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 I'm in my ego and running programs. Catch yourself. Okay. Don't fill in the blanks with what your own crazy fucking mind says that I'm teaching when I'm not teaching that. Just listen to what I'm teaching. And you'll get it. So something like breath work, for example, is a spiritual tool, which can be helpful and appropriate for some people early on in the lower grades of awakening or exploring or spiritually seeking. It is a tool that can be utilized in certain scenarios that can help some people get into their body more. But let me tell you, when you are elevated at a certain level, the forcing of breath work, you're forcing your breath. All that did when I took the course that I took years ago, when I took a breathwork course, it was just hilarious to me that everybody thought this was so elevated when um, all it did was bring my vibrational frequency down. Because when you are, when you elevate enough, listen to me, because every human can elevate way beyond these tools. You have the ability to go way above and beyond using any tool. So I've had people in the past like, come on, let's start with breath work. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm not going to do that because it lowers my vibrational frequency, forcing the breath. And this comes from patriarchy, learning how to dominate and force and get your way there by blah, 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 taking action. It's fucking relax with all that shit. It is ridiculous, okay? You don't have to force your way to breathe. You just body just fucking breathes. <laughs> you don't have to remember to breathe. Now, I'm not talking about you have conditions. We often don't breathe. You know, our diaphragms have to learn to breathe differently and blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, because you have a lack of awareness in your body. That's the only reason why people don't quote unquote breathe well. And their breath work could be beneficial for a short period of time to learn that tool so that you become more aware of your physical body and actually being grounded inside of your physical body for a period of time. Again, as I already said, a tool that can be useful. But when you act like breath work will just lead you to enlightenment, it lowered my vibrational frequency because I was so way beyond the free, like forcing my breath. No, I can just sit and breathe. And I'm there. I can channel 100%. My brain waves are completely different and activated in a very different way. I can go into a theta state very easily. All I have to do is switch my energy and go there. Do you understand? So, it again, it is okay and wonderful to use certain tools. But what I've learned and observed, especially over the past decade, is... All of this spiritual stuff comes to the forefront. There's a trendy spiritual thing going on right now. And everybody jumps on board. And you're all behaving like unconscious, brainwashed idiots. No, but I'm spiritual. I started a podcast, and it's a spiritual podcast. And that means I'm a spiritual teacher. I'm a spiritual teacher now. This is the fucking ignorance of what spirituality has become. You've taken the sacredness out of what it was meant to be. It's taken the sacredness out of certain teachers who are spiritual teachers on the planet who have done their life's work incredibly to such a capacity that they've offered teachings of, you know, being in presence, being in, in the now of what meditation can really help. That's a great tool. Again, good spiritual tool. Um, people who have offered the tools and they've been great spiritual teachers. I'm not taking anything away of what they've brought to our planet and how much they've helped. Thank God we've had them. I'm very grateful for other people who are very wise, um, elevated beings in their level of consciousness. And they bring, you know, all the beautiful things, the different pieces of the puzzle that, that other teachers and, and high beings have brought to this planet prior to us being here and currently alive today. Um, it is magnificent and it is wonderful, but the collective and humanity has really destroyed what spirituality was meant to be. There's supposed to be a, a level of freedom and a discernment 
there's a differentiation between what spirituality is and what religion is. All that dogmatic, misogynistic, sexist, fucking domineering bullshit that religions offer you. Spirituality was supposed to be a break from that. And to, you know, teach that you don't have to be in a rigid set of dogmatic fucking rules where you're powerless and the only thing that can save you is Jesus or something outside of you. It teaches separation consciousness. That's religion. Religion was based on, literally based on, separation consciousness and, and was created and taught from separation consciousness. You understand that? It just was. Spirituality was something that was supposed to be more spacious, more fluid. Um, the divinity, the sacredness that was offered in spirituality, never almost the extreme opposite of religion. There's two ends of the spectrum, by the way. And it's quite honestly, it's two sides of the same coin because polar opposites are often the same, just two different sides of the same coin, heads, heads or tails. So spirituality came and ended up being really created and taken over by people who are like, oh, yeah, I'm spiritual now. I meditate with crystals. Um, I channel beings. But I don't know who the fuck I'm actually channeling. And I have no idea that a lot of times when I think I'm channeling a certain something, it's something that's not what I think it is. We are not educated enough to have the level of responsibility, which is one of the universal ways of oneness, to have the level of responsibility to conduct ourselves in the way that is meant to bring ourselves and all of humanity up to a much higher level of consciousness. You are not a higher level of consciousness just because you listen to spiritual podcasts. This is the level of immaturity, narcissism, ignorance, arrogance that has been brought to spirituality. Of the 20 universal ways of oneness, the very first one, as you know, I say it over and over all the time, is the way of responsibility. And our responsibility is to educate ourselves and understand what we are actually participating in. When we do a certain something, what are we, why are we doing it? What are we participating in? Where is the education in it? And unfortunately, spirituality has become just any person in their ignorance, making up what they say is divine masculine, for example, because this is huge in the fucking spiritual communities. What divine masculine is and what divine feminine is, they make it the fuck up. They make up what they want to make up. It sounds good. And then they get a bunch of followers and they get a bunch of people to pay them for their shit. Meanwhile, what they're spewing is more fucking misogyny. There is no such thing as the way of truth, one of the universal ways of oneness. There is no such thing that a woman is subservient to the masculine. It doesn't fucking exist. And yet this is the kind of shit that's being taught in spiritual communities. You're supposed to lead her so she'll open. Get the fuck out. Have you not seen through this shit yet? I have seen coaches that coach men's groups <laughs> that are so amazing men that coach these groups and they teach about divine masculine, divine feminine, and they teach about relationships, blah, 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 blah. And they're out here spewing nothing but misogyny and the people that follow them don't know the fucking difference. You're coming from third dimensional separation consciousness, but because you're calling it a certain something and you're conducting yourself in a certain way, people fucking believe you because this is what spirituality has turned into. I can make up anything that I want to make up, spew it out to the world, have good enough marketing for it, get a bunch of followers, trick them into paying me for shit and believing me. And that's what spirituality has become. It's just fake facade, mumbo jumbo, bunch of bullshit. And with sprinkled in a little bit of divine truths here and there. But it's so blurred with all the made up fake pseudo spiritual bullshit that I don't know how the average person could discern what they're hearing from people. I don't know how you could possibly discern, you know, it, there's so much out there and it's just what people are making up, not to mention the people who, because they're spiritual, they read a bunch of books. They learn from some really legit, genuine spiritual teachers out there. They read their books, they study their stuff, 
and then they hodgepodge. They put a hodgepodge together of, you know, bits and pieces of what they've learned from other people. They regurgitate that out to you. They're good businessmen. They're good marketers. And then they sell that shit like they know something. And all they're doing is regurgitating a bunch of shit. Saying that, and follow me. And it's so reckless. And it is so dishonoring of the teachers that they, the teachers that they've stolen from. And not that they don't, sometimes I see people quoting. That's part of the way of honoring. I've learned this from this teacher. I've learned this from this author. I've learned this comes from wherever. If they actually are doing that, um, and I see that, a lot of the people I'm talking about, they will quote sometimes. They certainly don't do it all the time. Um, and that is what spirituality has become. We dance around. We wear, you know, fucking furry hats and ears and animals and hump each other and all look the same and dress the same. And that's spirituality. Do you have any self-awareness of what your egoic programs are? Any self-awareness at all? Because I'm going to be honest, the more spiritual people that I have met in their spiritual communities and at spiritual events of all kinds, from, you know, one of my favorite people on the planet, I am so grateful she's on the planet right now, is Alma the Hugging Saint. I know I've mentioned her before. If you don't know who she is, please look her up. Um, she is just fabulous. And many years ago, I went to an event in Los Angeles, California, USA, and I was like, I have to be hugged by the hugging saint. I just want to experience her and be in the same room with her. And, and I did. And it was, she's just a magical, incredible being. So highly recommend getting a hug from Alma, the hugging saint. Um, so, but anyway, that person, for example, is an example of somebody who has become the saint that she is. She went through the becoming she achieved an awakening to earn who she is and why people follow her. But holy shit, rude awakening. When I went to that event, I, it was one of the most magical, incredible event. I was so grateful that I was there and I got to experience her. What a blessing. Um, and yet it was also horrifying for me to see what quote unquote spiritual people were. And that was many, many years ago. And it's gotten so much worse since then. They were so, listen, spiritual people get so trapped in their egos. The spiritual ego is just like they go into a whole nother dimension of unconsciousness before they actually are ready to wake up. The path to awakening seems to take them 10 times longer than a person who is what we would call completely spiritually unconscious. And they get in a massive, you know, wreck or accident or something and then they go through a true awakening. Their life is so horrific, they actually start to go through a true authentic awakening um, versus people that just go down the spiritual path. I have yet to see anybody go down a spiritual path and not go into more unconsciousness. It just looks differently than what we call third dimensional unconsciousness. No, you're in the pseudo spiritual matrix and it's time for people to come out. We need you to be more elevated on this planet. I, I'm never judging or criticizing. I am educating and I am always <laughs> inviting anyone and everyone listening to wake up more, to wake up authentically, to go to a ne the next level higher and become more elevated. Because this whole entire planet, every being, every animal, every aspect of nature, Every human on this planet benefits when you can achieve that. And I want that more than I want anything. That's part of why I'm here to help facilitate that. So let's understand because of what spirituality has become collectively, you know, it's not that I'll never use the word spiritual or spirituality ever again, um, but I will be more accurate and more purposeful in using the language that reflects myself as a mystic, the mystic that I actually am. Okay. And I'm just explaining why and how. So you understand when you see a little bit of a change. So let's then understand what is mysticism? What really is it? And uh, let me say this first, what I am here to offer humanity this time around 
is a combination of ancient mystical teachings, ancient wisdom. That is always, of course, here as a part of what I do. Um, but it is also a combination, an integration, a union, oneness of what modern mystical teacher, uh, mystical teachings are here for a mystic that is here today, alive today. Okay. In, this is key, in the age of Aquarius. When the age of Aquarius started, we were officially activated in the oneness consciousness teachings, the 20 universal ways of oneness to be offered to the entire planet. Those are mystical teachings that are here to elevate another level higher what mysticism always has been. But understand, you guys, we are infinite beings, period. And there is no such thing as, and here's all the religious people that are the religious Bible thumping freaks that are going to show up. It's only Jesus. Jesus is the only path. Jesus is your savior. Oh, for the love, shut the fuck up already. Just get the fuck out. If you're listening to this and you're one of these psychotic religious people, just leave. You're not going to like anything that I say. And let me be clear, everybody listening. My number one, number one on my list of, of the people that I love the most, that I am the most grateful, have walked this planet and done what they have done for humanity. Jesus is literally my number one. That is my favorite human being that has ever walked this planet. I could tell you my top 10 that I am so grateful for uh, came to this world and did what they achieved, what they achieved for the world, for everything, all beings, not just humans. Jesus is number one. I love what he came here to do in his teachings. I don't love what religion fucking did and destroyed and all the sexist, misogynistic sociopaths that took over everything that he taught, destroyed it, dismantled it, left little bits and pieces here and there, and then claimed that to be some religion that Jesus came here. That isn't what he came here to do. All right. So all the like crazy, psychotic, religious people Third dimensional teachings that come from separation consciousness will teach you the only savior is Jesus. That's not what he came here to teach you, first of all. So you got it all wrong. Totally misunderstood the teachings to begin with. Um, he came here to teach you to be in union with the divine. Okay. That it isn't outside of you. To stop praying for shit outside of you. That it is outside of you, it is inside of you, it is all around you, it is in everything all at once. Okay, so he had his time, and his time was during the age of Pisces. And those teachings, the actual teachings of Jesus, not this made up religious fucking sexist misogynistic bullshit that we claim Jesus taught, which he didn't. I'm talking about the real teachings of Jesus, of course, are timeless, but he came here. He offered those teachings for the age of Pisces. He died. His life was over. And those teachings were meant to carry us forward through the age of Pisces. That age is now over. And it doesn't mean the truth of his teachings, the unconditional love of his teachings, the timelessness of his teachings simply go away and ignore them. That's don't misunderstand and claim that I'm saying something I'm not. But those teachings, it is time for more elevated teachings of enlightenment to come forward, which they have. Why? Because we're in a new age and every new age, the next age that comes after the age of Aquarius, there will be another set of teachings that are more elevated than the universal ways of oneness and oneness consciousness teachings. Why? Because we're all infinite beings. Hello, remember your divinity. We don't ever stop growing. That's why. Do you understand? When we don't ever stop growing because we are divinely infinite beings, right? We are infinitely divine beings. Both of those are true. Because of that, in human form, we don't stop growing. Do you understand? So there's no, when you reach the, the highest level of enlightenment and humans start reaching that highest level of enlightenment, which I pray to God, y'all achieve, you know, whether it's this lifetime, whatever lifetime, during the age of Aquarius, during the age of Aquarius. Okay, that during the age of Aquarius, we can now achieve 
a much higher level of enlightenment than has ever been offered to the planet before. Do you understand that? Because we're infinite beings, mystical teachers are meant to come to this planet strategically placed during certain periods of time to offer the new elevated teachings so humanity can then learn them and catch up and transform and elevate and go higher. Okay, Jesus did a great job. He accomplished his mission. He really did. But there are more elevated teachings now that go beyond that, that are actually higher because we're infinite beings and we are growing and the planet so desperately needs us in order for this planet and all the beings on it to be saved. And I don't mean saved by Jesus. I mean literally to live and not have humans go extinct and not have more animals go extinct on this planet because we're fucking destroying it. That's what I mean. Okay. Nothing outside of you is going to fucking save you. Stop acting like ignorant little fucking helpless children, powerless entitled children that everything's going to be handed to you on a silver fucking platter by Jesus or some religion or something outside of you. This is what it means to elevate higher now is to become the thing that you are seeking outside of you in order for you to be a game changer on this planet. And that is where mystical teaching and mystical teachings and mysticism comes into play. Do you understand? So the elevated new level of enlightenment to achieve for humans, those are the 20 universal ways of oneness. Okay, it's the highest. We've never been able to go that high before. That is the highest we can achieve. And the age of Aquarius is the next couple thousand years is for us to achieve just that. Now, you understand that, you can understand the definitions that I'm going to offer to you right now. I want you to understand what mysticism is. It is the path to becoming one with oneness consciousness. The all that is everything. It is a path that includes a framework and a structure to guide a framework and a structure to guide one into the becoming of oneness consciousness, yourself in human form. It's a becoming. You become oneness consciousness. It is not a religion. Mysticism is not a religion, as I've mentioned. It is not spirituality. It is not strict or rigid it isn't strict or rigid, but there is definite structure while maintaining flexibility. Let me say that again. There is definite structure while maintaining flexibility in the guidance of its initiates to maintain a devotion to the divine, to their own, your own divine natures, to upholding, to maintain the devotion to upholding the level of dedication to transform form the human aspect of self into the enlightened version of your humanness. That's mysticism. It isn't willy-nilly do whatever the fuck you want, think whatever the fuck you want, because that's not universal truth, to think whatever the fuck you want to think. That's immaturity. That's ignorance. That's fucking spirituality, what it's turned into anyway. Okay? So... When you really understand mysticism is the full immersive union with or the integrative absorption into the deity or the absolute, we could call it the spiritual appreh it's the spiritual apprehension of wisdom. That means universal wisdom that is inaccessible to the intellect. It may be attained through self-surrender, and through the becoming of each and every way of oneness. Do you understand now why there's a framework and there's structure to it? When you become educated, there is a framework and a structure to being educated. Now, I'm not talking about how fucked up our school systems are, because they are. Don't ever misunderstand when I use this example. However, it's easy to understand. There's a framework to be educated. This is easy to understand that you cannot earn a doctorate level of education if you haven't passed second grade yet. That's easy to understand. So when it comes to mysticism, the level of, you know, quote unquote, spiritual education, that level of divine education, there is a framework and a structure for a reason. You can't pass 12th grade and go on to college 
if you haven't yet passed fifth grade. If you don't know fifth grade work, you have to master the grade that you're in. This is a huge differentiator between mysticism and the mystical path of learning and educating yourselves and becoming. The mystical path is the path of actual becoming, not just pseudo spiritualism of, oh my God, look, I'm spiritual now. That means I'm enlightened. I'm woke. I'm sovereign being. Fucking Christ. Okay. Complete and utter bypassing and, fr- and zero awareness of what it takes to actually earn a master's degree when you don't even have a second grade education yet. Okay. Because that's spirituality. Oh, I'm getting a master's too. Oh, look, I have a doctorate too. That's funny because you can't write full sentences yet. You don't even know the English language. (laughs) So you're not actually at a doctorate level. That is never a fucking put down or a criticism. It is the way of truth. It's the way of goddamn truth. And it's so easy to understand it that way. So when it comes to true awakening and elevating and going down a path of enlightenment, and achieving that and becoming that, of course there's a goddamn framework for it. And that doesn't mean the framework is rigid. Only your egoic fucking mind would then say, oh, it's a strict path, that's bullshit. Did I say it was a strict path? Actually, go back and re-listen. I said it was not a fucking strict path at all. It's not rigid. It's widely flexible. However, there is structure and a framework for a reason. You cannot learn calculus if you don't know how to add one plus one and get two. Then you can't fucking learn calculus. It's that simple. There's a a structure and a framework for a reason. Every grade builds upon itself so that you can master that grade of consciousness that you are in to make you more successful at achieving the next elevated higher grade that you can move into in the grade of consciousness. That's part of what mysticism is. Do you understand? You cannot become fully immersive union and absorption and integrative absorption into the one oneness consciousness itself that created the creator what most people refer to as god god isn't the highest that was created by oneness consciousness itself you can't fully immersively absorb into that and integrate into that where you become it and it becomes you to the level in which you can achieve that in human form by simply saying, oh, I'm spiritual now. And I wear beads and crystals and I, I wear linen and I'm half naked with ever and hump everybody and do these orgy things. That's not what it fucking means to wake up people. It's fucking nonsense. And it is a mockery of what spirituality was, which is why it's poison now. And why I'm drawing a line of sand, this whole light feminine, dark feminine. Yep, that's spirituality. Not something I'm part of because it's fucking stupid and it's ridiculous and it's made up fucking nonsense. Literally made up nonsense. And let me throw this at you real quick. It's made up nonsense by people who want to keep you unconscious and brainwashed. Wake up to that. If you don't, if you think you're waking up, but you're not awakening for real, they got you. You're brainwashed. It is why I'm so goddamn passionate about what I teach, what we teach at Masters of Self University, what we offer in the type of programs we offer for people, because it wakes you the fuck up for real. You can't hide when you do this type of work. And here's the best part. You can't fucking be brainwashed anymore. You can't be brainwashed anymore. I'm not here to tell you what you fucking want to hear. I'm not here to stroke your ego. That's not what I do. That is not what a mystic does. I come from the way of truth. I come from every goddamn way of oneness. And I teach other people how to do that too. For yourself. Connect to your power inside of you. Okay. Not to be a part of a fucking tribe. Where everybody's the same. And y'all tell each other what you want to hear to feel good about yourselves. And go all day long keeping codependence, enabling, helplessness, powerlessness, bullshit. By telling, validate me, validate me, validate me. Yep, that's all spirituality. It was not meant, spirituality was not meant to be that, but it is what it's become. 
it's what it's become. And it's sickening because it's keeping people at a low grade of consciousness. It's keeping people unconscious. And the powers and the evil that be want you there. Hello. And the fucking most ironic thing about it is all these woke people and spiritual people talk endlessly about the matrix and break free from it. You just entered into the other one, the spiritual matrix, and you're fucking dangling around, dicking around in there instead of actually waking up for real. Like you think what it means to be spiritual is to look a certain way, to say certain words, to meditate and do plant medicine, meditate with crystals and blah, blah, blah. I do breath work now. I'm spiritual. It means I'm woke. Are you, wake up. That doesn't mean anything except that that's what you're choosing to be a part of. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm never criticizing it. I am teaching you what it actually is, how you are actually showing up in the world, because that's my job. That is my soul's job to do that and offer that to you so you can wake up for real and we can change this planet for real. And that is the path of a mystic. That is a path of an initiate. You want to become an initiate, it means you choose to be on a path of real fucking awakening, not this fucking woo-woo spiritual fucking nonsense where you're dressing up like fucking animals and being furry, whatever the fuck you're doing. Like that somehow means you're an awakening divine being. You want to go play with that? Go play with that. There's never a judgment on that. Go ahead. But don't call it what it isn't. That doesn't mean you are actually awakening. It's fucking ridiculous. And it's okay to go be ridiculous. I'm just challenging you to be ridiculous in truth. <laughs> you want to go play around and dick around with these things? Go do it. You, It is okay to go do that. Don't fucking call it what it isn't because then you're lying. And it also means your brain, if you believe it, you're just brainwashed. That's what I want you to understand. So what is what is a mystic and what is the, the path of somebody who is on the mystical path, let's be very clear. You're very educated. You're willing to be educated in truth, not in spiritual fucking bullshit nonsense, because I want that to be true. And it sounds good. And it strokes my ego. I'm spiritual, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. <sighs> That's not the path of a mystic. A path of a mystic, although is the most freeing thing, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, physically, even that you can ever experience. It is, um, it is a, a path of absolute devotion. You know, it really is like you choosing to be an initiate, like you will go and have a lot of tests of initiation. Why? Because powerful people can pass them. That's why divinely powerful people don't need their fucking tribe to validate them and heal with them all the time to feel good about themselves. That's spiritual fucking people, which is just filled with codependency and enabling and powerlessness and confusion and ignorance. That is not the path of a mystical student. And you have to master being a student before you ever elevate to become a teacher. We should all know that. Spiritual people don't seem to know that. <laughs> I can tell you that true mystics, students of mysticism, embrace that because they embrace the way of truth. They embrace the way of responsibility. They take it very seriously. They embrace the way of honoring and humility. They take that very, very seriously because those are the ways of oneness that lead the path of a mystical student, a mystical being, right? So an actual mystic, a true mystic isn't just, oh, I'm a mystic because I like mystical things and I want to be on the spiritual or the mystical path and not the spiritual path. That makes me a mystic. No, it doesn't. It makes you a student of mysticism. It makes you somebody who is choosing to become an initiate of the mystical journey, the mystical path of awakening. A mystic is one who's achieved, achieved the absorption into and actually became, they achieved the becoming, they became the integration of oneness consciousness. That's complete unity with everything all at once and within everything by first becoming Every one of the 20 universal ways of oneness, you become all of the ways in oneness and you're functioning in human form as a mystical being of these ways. This is how you respond to everything. This is how you show up in life, that you've become all of these. Do you understand? This person, a true mystic, has completed their role as an initiate through the inner, inner, inner experiences, the inner experiences 
because all of this is your experience, an energetic experience of evolution. The inner experiences of invitations and embodiment of the ways of oneness. Invitations, the ways of oneness, they will invite you to go through an initiation of what each way of oneness is. They will invite you to go through an initiation of compassion if you are not yet at an enlightened definition of the way of compassion as the being that you are. You have to become the way of compassion, not talk about it, not write memes about it or post about it on social media. You have to actually become it. Do you understand? So the inner experience and invitations and initia uh, initiations that you pass to embody the ways of oneness, as well as simultaneously outwardly display those ways of oneness in all aspect of your life and life experiences. You have to practice what you preach. You have to be what you claim you are. You have to walk your talk. That is the path of an initiate, of a mystical initiate. The characteristics of a mystic are each of the 20 universal ways of oneness, period, end. Read through the list of what those ways are. Okay. And that, as for a lack of a better way to say it, the modern day mystic, that's not some, you know, oh, I'm going to make up what this is now. No, this is the age of Aquarius. We have been given an addition to an additional volume of ancient mystical teachings. It doesn't mean ancient mystical teachings cease to exist or there are no, all of it's irrelevant now. It means remember we are infinite beings. And at some point in different phases of humanity, phases and stages of humanity, you are offered a more elevated teaching to add to the what we call the ancient teachings. What we as humans call ancient teachings aren't ancient teachings. They're just present. They're the way of presence. They're just the way of truth. They are timeless. Okay. The universal ways of oneness are teachings that ascended masters, souls, divine souls, very high souls in, in other realms and including angels, they go to different realms to learn the universal way, ways of oneness and become them. These teachings of the ways have never been offered to humanity before. They've never been offered to humanity before now. They were being prepared for humans to achieve a higher level, to offer this to humanity for during the age of Aquarius. It's a new level of enlightenment that we can all reach and achieve if we choose to. And it is desperately needed on this planet right now, as you all know, which is why it's being offered now. Okay. So a modern day mystic, don't really like that term, but I think it's easy to understand for now. It's why I'm using it and offering it. So a modern day actual mystic, I gave you the definition of a mystic, what that truly means. You fully completed, fully absorbed into the ways of oneness, fully absorbed into oneness consciousness herself. You've become it and everything that exists around you, right? I've given you that definition. So a modern day mystic, is simply a mystic who understands and embodies the ancient mystical teachings, truly lives them, is them, became them, while integrating the current more elevated mystical teachings that are now offered in the new age of Aquarius, in this age of Aquarius. And that's the teachings of oneness consciousness, the teachings of the universal ways of oneness. Do you understand? Okay. A mystical teacher is a person who's fully and authentically become a mystic first not still a student, they've become the mystic and they teach and guide students and seekers who choose, who choose the past of mystical learning and becoming, becoming an initiate in this work. Okay. A mystical initiate is a person who seeks to obtain and become the full authority of a mystic and then knowingly and willingly, this is key, then knowingly and willingly moves through the tests of initiation to achieve higher levels towards oneness consciousness, to becoming a walking example, a walking, living, breathing example 
of the embodied universal ways of oneness, the embodied universal ways of oneness. You've become the ways. A mystical initiate devotes themselves to this path of becoming. A mystical initiate understands that it is through the direct experience as the path of transformation, the direct energetic experience as the path of transformation that allows one to elevate and open themselves up to the mystical side of their divine nature, which is the absolute truth of what they are. That is a mystical initiate. So my question to you, are you willing to become a mystical initiate to become the highest level that you can become and achieve and devote yourselves to that path in order to help change this world, to help change the evil on this planet, to help change the horrific things that we still see, the way that patriarchy destroys men and turns men into monsters that do things like participate and create, you know, sex trafficking, child human trafficking. Because this is what our world has become. This is what patriarchy, if you just think patriarchy means men, you're living in ignorance. All men on this planet should want to change what we are experiencing out there. Okay. And to truly make that change, I've seen what spirituality has become over the years, especially the last decade. And it has been extraordinarily disappointing to put it mildly and kindly. <laughs> I'm not saying that as a criticism or a judgment at all. I'm not saying that as a judgment. It's what I've observed and it is preventing us from uplifting and healing the things that need to be powerfully healed on this planet, the cruelty that is on this planet, how brainwashed and dysfunctional humans are. That means men and women, how brainwashed everyone is. And just because you have an awareness that people have been brainwashed, it doesn't mean you understand all the levels to that. Again, that's not a judgment or criticism of anybody. But if you're, if you think you're awakened because you're dancing around with crystals and beads and wearing linen and half naked this and animal suit that and bunny ears and fucking ram's head ears and that's somehow you're an awakened being and you're broke you've broken out of the spiritual ma or the sorry the 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 matrix all you've done is enter into the spiritual matrix that was created for fools like you i don't say that in judgment because you're still brainwashed that's what we want to awaken out of so that's my invitation to you is to go through a mystical healing you can heal at the soul level that way. But it is a path of devotion to yourself, meaning to your divine self, to becoming the full embodiment of your highest divine self that you can actually become in this lifetime. That's what it really means, simply put. So if you're ready to do that, that's my invitation to you. Hit that like button, share this out, make sure you subscribe. Visit masterswithselfuniversity.com. Join our groups that we have to group coach you into to this, to bring you in as an initiate and initiate you to what this work really is in order to make a bigger impact on yourself, your life, your relationships, the whole world around you when you become what this really is. So to the mystics, to the mystical initiates, and to those of you who are ready to become a mystical initiate, Here's your open invitation, okay? If you're not ready to join a coaching program, at least join the membership that we have. At least take the digital course, the, to, the introduction to the universal ways of oneness. At least start, just start somewhere, start there. And we'll guide you the rest of the way as you're ready to be guided that way. Thank you for listening, sending all the mystical, magical wonders of our universe and outside of it to you, all the love in the world to you. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now, everybody.